I should remove that. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the Political Deep Dive. I'm Dave Valente. Uh, so contrary to popular uh, belief this week, I uh, am not going to be bashing my my former political party. Um, uh, what happened last week ha happened. Uh, nothing you can do about it. I said most of what I was going to say last, uh, about a week and a half ago when I did leave. Um, uh, a lot of people have been reaching out to me about, you know, what my next steps are, what they should do. Um, a lot of people were mad about what happened um, and think that the liberty movement in the United States is over. I will tell you that just because the vehicle that you've been traveling in decided to put itself into a ditch on the right side of the road, that it doesn't mean that the road to liberty is still not... It, it, is it that's still there it's still there that you can travel down it and there are other vehicles that are going down that road and we're going to be highlighting some of those uh vehicles that you can hit yourself to and and move towards a more free 
uh, uh, America. And uh, so um, I've titled this episode, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Activism. Uh, sadly, I didn't have 42 uh, organizations that I wanted to feature here, but I do have some really good ones that uh, if you want to put your time, money, and effort into these organizations, uh, th this is the way to do it. So um, I would like to bring on my guest host tonight, AJ Campbell. How you doing? Hi. I'm doing all right. How are you? I am wonderful. I am, I'm doing very good right now, so... I do have to say the perspective on this end of the week is, is a little bit more positive than, you know, this time last week. So I'm, I'm with you 100%. Like, yeah, I mean, it's pointing out the positive, the possibilities of the opportunities that don't involve. That's that's exactly where we need to be. So yeah. I'm glad that that's where we're going tonight. I think for the most part. So uh, Dan uh, is not able to join us tonight because he is tra uh, traveling. He's doing a, I think, 32nd high school reunion this week in Colorado. So congrats to him for making it 32 years. I got 30 coming up uh, next month in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, Emily is working the early shift. That's why she hasn't been on the last few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. She was sick. Now she's working in the early shift at, at work. And I'm not going to torture her and make her come on at 10 o'clock when she has to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to her. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, Tyler and Karen might join us, but uh, we'll, we'll see them later if they, they do join us. But uh, we'll get into the, uh, oh, we got a comment. Uh, yes. So let me tell you before we get into our, the meat of our show, let me tell you about uh, the dangers of Silly String. <laughs> and uh, the, the stupidest reason why someone can get banned off of Facebook. I found it. Um, so uh, during the convention, uh, somebody was mentioning that um, a, a pink haired menace was at the mic and hogging the mic and being just a general nuisance. Big surprise. Yes. Anybody who knows the, the Libertarian Party know who I'm talking about immediately. I made the comment of someone should silly string her. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, it didn't catch it immediately, but the Facebook algorithms, or someone made a complaint, I don't know, um, uh, hit me up on Monday afternoon saying, your comment is an incitement to violence, and therefore you're banned for 30 days. Now, you know, I've had some Facebook bans. I've had some really stupid ones. Uh, the, the Jeffrey Dahmer <laughs> meme uh, uh, a couple of Thanksgivings ago was was probably the dumb one, that, that dumbest one that I had to, to date, but Silly string. I am the Osama bin Laden of silly string. Apparently, <laughs> apparently. Uh, and that is why I am on Facebook now as Sil E String. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Sil E String. Uh, that's why I chose that name. If in case you're people still, know. you know, cautiously hilarious. So yeah, I might change the name later. <laughs> silly string her. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm, I'm evil, so. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's start talking about activism. Uh, uh, you know, so I know a lot of people were very invested in the Libertarian Party, very invested in, invested in uh, you know, moving the, moving the party forward, trying to get candidates elected. Um, you know, we've had 200 candidates elected in Pennsylvania through the maneuver. We've had uh, candidates. Uh, Marshall Burt was elected in in. Wyoming to the state legislature, first one in 20 years. Um, and I know a lot of people feel that we've taken a step back as, as far as the party goes and, and that um, we're not going to be electing people. Um, but there are there are organizations that you should be focusing on. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is the one, uh, if Dan was here, he'd be talking about it because he's much more eloquent about it than I am. But uh, let me share... that screen share this screen there it is people for liberty 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 there we go yeah so uh people for liberty uh is uh dan is the executive director of this organization um the principles of the organization with dan um uh joe jorgensen is the president of the organization um they just have a a wonderful group of people involved in the in people for liberty 
And the purpose of People for Liberty is, uh, it really is outside of partisan politics, it's gathering people together to learn how to do any kind of form of activism. Like they, they've been doing the, the uh, Liberty, or Liberty Day of, of Action, which is on May 1st. They do, um, they do rallying things for, like last year they did one for immigration on the border to get products and services out to those people who are stuck on the border. Um, you know, so th it's a great place to, to advertise your events if you're doing something for Liberty, whether it's the Libertarian Party, whether it's another party that is doing something that is increasing the liberty of people in the United States. This is the place where you want to go. It's a very great big hub for Liberty. Um, the, uh, the new thing that they've, they've done with people for Liberty is, uh, a new organization. Yes, I do. Um, actually you'll be seeing my, uh, landing page on it, uh, because it is just a generic, uh, right now it's a, it's a very Spartan website, but home for Liberty. And, uh, let me, that's the, uh, people for Liberty. Uh, website, which is people for the number four liberty.org. Uh, the next one is home for liberty. All right. So this is home for liberty. Home for liberty basically is a, uh, it's almost a, well, it really is a, uh, social media type website. Um, you, like I have this here, I haven't set up a uh, profile picture or a profile picture, but not a profile banner picture. Um, but um, you know, it's it's a good way for people in the liberty movement to connect and, and do things and, and uh, keep in contact with one another. Um, we've seen how social media has gotten, I mean, I'm a, a prime example of it this week, uh, that social media can be taken away from you very quickly uh, and no chance for you to, uh, you know, I have no, I had no chance to really get that word out there. Uh, it was your, your band. And, and then, you know, I had to create a sock account to, to circumvent Facebook. So, um, you know, this is a, this is an organization for libertarians to get together, get together and, and not be one of those toxic ones like me or, or what is the Trump one truth or something like that. Oh, um, I yeah. I, I wouldn't get to that one either. Um, but yeah, so, so home for Liberty, is great it's it is a subscription service uh but dan has uh and people for liberty are generously giving six months off if you use the code i am home um you know it's like 5.99 a month if you if you don't use the code so for for a basic membership and there's a premium membership as well um, but if you use i am home you get the first six months free um and uh it's a i think it's going to be a good service for for us to kind of huddle and, and uh, you know, if Facebook go, does go the, you know, way overboard on, on suspensions and things like that, this is a good place to, to uh, reconnect. So uh, that is homeforliberty.org. Um, AJ, let's talk about one that's very near and dear to both of our hearts. Oh. Yeah, throw your prop on. So... If you are in Tennessee, you can get, well, I mean, you don't just have to be in Tennessee to get the hat, but here in Tennessee, we have a wonderful organization called For All Tennessee. And these individuals are fighting actively right now, every day against government overreach, such things as uh, eminent domain, um, bail hearings, um, property rights, all of it. I, I mean, these guys have, have, have gone up there and worked. It's impressive, honestly, especially considering how many, um, I don't know, overreaching laws there are in Tennessee. It's kind of amazing. Um, Justin Cornette, he's, he's one of the, the founders and he is relatively tall. Like, I, I don't know, over six foot at least. And, and they, they did a side by side of him and the stacks of law books of laws here in Tennessee and it's taller than him. Yeah. You know, like that's ridiculous. So they're, they're fighting for us. So. I love, uh, for all Tennessee. I like the concept, uh, and the work that they do. Um, we've had Justin, uh, on, we've had Josh, uh, Echel on as well. 
um, uh, to talk about for all Tennessee, the, the work that they've had, actually the success that they've had mm -hmm. um, uh, with laws that actually help uh, help everyday citizens in Tennessee. Um, it's all crowdsourced. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they talk about, you know, the before the legislative session, they say, all right, talk, talk to us about what do you want to see um, uh, donors get to, to vote on on priority targets, and then they uh, go attack those priority targets in, in the legislative session. And uh, Justin is a wonderful advocate for, for liberty and wonderful uh, wonderful lobbyist um, uh, to, to be able to get that uh, work done in, in Tennessee. So um, even if you're not in Tennessee, this is an organization that needs our support and needs, um, uh, I, I think the next step will be eventually to make more for all uh, for all organizations. For uh, all right, Georgia, right. for all Alabama, like, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That is their plan and, and that is the vision. And this may very well be the way is we all crowdsource and these people go fight for what we want because they're the ones that can do that. I can't go be a lobbyist. I'm a nurse. I don't know what I'm doing. I can, however, be a recurring person and have a voice, you know, a, a recurring donor, donor, five bucks a month, you know, yeah. practically, I mean, you know, what you can afford, they're not going to bleed you dry and you get an opinion. Your voice matters. You can't say that everywhere you, you get to give your opinion, that it actually matters. Sure, they'll ask. These guys actually care what matters to you. I mean, and that's the amazing thing. I mean, I, I've spent so much money uh, working the Libertarian Party uh, and not really getting, at least on the lobbying side, a whole lot out of that. So, yeah. Um, and this is this is a great organization to to get that kind of effect out of uh, out of government. Uh, you know, get how wonderful would it be to get a situation where eminent domain is cast aside forever in your locality you you have rights to your property that cannot be superseded by government that's that's wonderful how you know uh cash bond uh, uh you know ending the drug war things like that 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 you can do at the local level um far easier than trying to get uh, the whatever these clowns are at the national level to do um you can you can Actually, come up to your your state legislator. You can come up to your you know even your county or, or uh, local legislators and, and talk about you know these issues. Uh, trying to meet with your local congressman, like my congressman here in West Virginia, uh, never comes into West Virginia except for uh, a few weeks during this campaign because he was you know put into a district with another uh, incumbent. But I'll never see him again. He's yeah. won re-election, so he's he's gone. You know. <laughs> I'll never be able to affect policy. Not that he would ever do anything that was really liberty oriented. Um, you are completely correct on that. And they also will keep you informed. Your, your representative isn't going to send any emails out or Facebook posts saying, hey, this is coming up. What do you think we should do about it? That's not going to happen. They're going to do their best to keep that as secret as possible. Yes, it's public knowledge, but you got to go looking for it. And you got to go. You want to you got to know where to go. For All Tennessee, you follow them on Facebook, Instagram, you sign up for their emails, you'll know what's going on. They'll tall you. They'll tell you exactly what's coming up. ForAllTN.org is scrolling there at the bottom. Uh, again, a great organization. We both both love uh, For All Tennessee and what they're doing. And, and I really hope that this is an organization that can uh, move forward uh, as, you know, a, a top flight issue advocacy organization uh, in this country. So. Uh, next organization is uh, someone, if you're very familiar with uh, libertarian politics, is the uh, Libertarian Policy Institute. This is run by uh, Nick Sarwark, uh, former chair of the, the party. Um, also Richard Manzo, who's an elected uh, official in, in the state of New Hampshire, libertarian. Um, the, the basic premise of um, the Libertarian Policy Institute is to craft uh, legislation that can work in your whether it's your local community, your county, or your state, uh, it's to give you model legislation to bring forward uh, to provide libertarian solutions to local issues. A lot of times people say, you know, libertarian policies are just pie in the sky and people don't understand what, you know, they, they, nobody understands, why don't we just try freedom? 
uh, is it would be a good good idea. Um, but it, it's, if you can craft it in a way that says this is the policy, and this is how it's going to impact you, and to provide data to back that up, you got a chance at changing policy and getting in the room with those people that can make that policy change. So, uh, and a lot of times, I will tell you, legislators, uh, county commissioners, city councilors, if you can bring them something that's pre-written, mm -hmm. they love that because they don't have to do a lot of work. And if you can give them the information about why this stuff should pass, they love that too, because then they don't have to do work. Le legislators don't like doing work. So more you can do for them, the better. So if you join this organization, you could be like, hey, my local county government is up to some shenanigans trying to raise taxes to build this. Can you help me draft a, a, a libertarian solution, a, a, a free people's solution? Yeah. Um, or to counter this. Yeah. Or hmm. uh, the the um, the county is is running into issues because it can't secure funding to fix roads. Um, or can't is having a problem fixing roads. Then, we, you know, that's where we can start ta talking about, hey, how can we do this voluntarily? How can we get people together to actually uh, do some road repairs? Uh, you know, like how Domino's Pizza does it. <laughs> uh, to be shown up uh, yeah by Domino's. Um, you know it's either on all of us it's either get Domino's to do it or have someone spray paint a penis or wait wasn't wasn't rod stewart didn't he repair the road around his neighborhood so it wouldn't damage his car i'm almost positive that that's right. truthful and if it's not i'm sorry i've lied to everyone but i really <laughs> think that that's true because i couldn't have made something that strange up right yeah like, uh, <laughs> the policy institute so the libertarian policy institute libertarianpolicy.org um will you can get contact with that group um again it's if you need if you need libertarian policy if you need pre-written resolutions you might need to tweak some stuff to be more kosher with your local laws but they'll work with you on doing that and uh help get the uh get the word out and and provide you support and research and stuff like that on the back end uh, to help you pass liberty balanced re uh, legislation in your local community. Um, I'm actually writing that down. Thank you. Yeah. So those are the big policy organizations that I, that I've uh, actually, there's one more. Um, I know a lot of, a lot of libertarians were really fond of the, um, the, the Frontier Pod Project. Frontier Project, again, we Marshall Burt uh, was elected first legislator in a generation elected uh, directly to the legislature as a libertarian. Um, and people were reticent about giving up on that donation. Now, I don't trust money going to the, the Libertarian Party itself. Um, I, you know, despite people saying that it can, you know, it's earmarked for this program or that program, it really just takes a uh, you know a board meeting to to change how those funds are allocated. So if you are so inclined, the uh, Libertarian Legislative Campaign Committee is a uh, is a PAC that is independent of the party, and um, share this. so the L the LLCC uh, supports those frontier party candidate or frontier uh, project candidates. Uh, but those phones go directly to that project and cannot be taken by the, the Libertarian Party. Um, so if you're really wanting to continue to support the, the Frontier Project, this is how you do it. Uh, give it to the LLCC, uh, and those funds will go and uh, be directed to those candidates that you want uh, to. to. And the, again, since it's a PAC that the, the officially the Libertarian Party cannot coordinate any effort so the libertarian party could not direct them to donate those funds to other candidates uh if they don't share the the values of our good frontier party candidates or frontier uh project candidates so um <laughs> so we have i mean that, that is kind of uh you're you're beautifully uh, sidestepping it all it's 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 marvelous to watch thank you sir uh, <laughs> I'm trying not to be 
<laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, yes. Just go right ahead. I'm going to giggle over here. It's fun. No, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> There are other things that you can do. There are other parties you can join. I, I know a lot of people have just left the the Libertarian Party. I'm I'm one of them. I've registered as a, a what do we call it? Nonpartisan, uh, no no partisan something. NPA is the the uh, shorthand for it, um, which means I don't have a party in, in West Virginia. And um, I know a lot of people have have done that. Um, and they may look for other parties. And there are, there are three other parties that, that I don't know if I recommend every one of them. I, I actually sat and watched the Pirate Party this week. Um, they had their convention. Um, U.S. Pirate Party. We had them on a couple weeks ago to talk about the U.S. Pirate Party. We had Drew Bingaman, Bingaman who was, our, uh, was a former libertarian uh, elected uh, constable in, in his local community. Um, the tonight the the pennsylvania pirate party became an official affiliate of the the u.s pirates um the u.s pirates elected to new officers i believe anthony j the guy that was on our show yeah. uh, is the new chair of the party so congrats to him uh or, or it's actually going on right now i believe so they're the pirate national committee meeting is going on right now um so congrats to all of them um the pirate party is kind of a they call it syncretic um, which is a mix of Democratic policies and Republican policies. Um, uh, well, actually, really all political party policies. They um, One of the, the things they did right after the Libertarian National Convention was they pirated our bigotry plank. So the Libertarian National Convention decided to get rid of the plank that says we condemn bigotry as irrational or repug repugnant replaced it with something a little more mealy mouthed uh, and the pirate party pirated it and it's now part of their platform so i think that's really cool that i know well done I, I appreciate i appreciate it and and the pirate party has been doing a lot to uh reach out to uh to libertarians who've been disaffected by what's going on um i think the next two uh, i'll have to look it up and I, I can share it on on my page but um uh, they're going to be doing some uh, libertarian outreach events uh, here over the next few weeks. This is smart. Uh, and this is brilliant, they, actually. I'm I'm very impressed. And no, I've I've seen Drew uh, commenting because, of course, you know we're libertarians, so or we were whatever. Uh, we're still opinionated as crap, so everybody's taking a post, um, and, and that's fine. I mean, I I, I did as well, but. He's commenting, you know, hey, you know, it, it's okay. You, you, you're you not lost. You, you just ain't found yet, you know, and, and putting his link there. And that's very smart. And most of it, it's not, it's not that different. No. There's there a are few no. things that uh, economic things that are going to be an issue. Um, but, but otherwise, I mean, they, they're nice so far. And I know we're all suspicious of that right this second, but Drew <laughs> is very nice. Yeah. So talk to him. I think that he would be willing to answer any questions anybody had. Honestly, Absolutely. I'm sure they're going to come on the show here pretty soon. Oh, I hope so. They're uh, fun. Yeah, they're, they're a fun group. Um, and, uh, you know, and even though I'm disaffected by my, my last experience, I'm still very pro third party. So uh, I want to grow the number of parties in this country. I know that there's very many uh, barrier, barriers to success for those parties, especially when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to ballot access and how we run our elections and things like that. Uh, there, are, there, but I think over the last few weeks we've seen that our system is just systemically irreparably damaged, and. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there, there, we we could descend into uh, you know a bad thing like civil war, or we could just allow this to fester until the thing just collapses in on itself. And I don't think either one of those options is all that great. But um, hopefully, the more peaceful one. Hopefully, the more peaceful one. Yeah. Um, and no, as far as. As far as third parties go, it still hasn't changed. This has not changed anything. The duopoly is still the enemy, period. So, yeah, we're going to have to take this into our own hands. Yeah, that might mean finding other parties, finding other ways to reach out and, and change the world right next door. Yeah. 
The other party uh, just formed out of uh, former libertarians in Pennsylvania, but they are very keen on bringing this uh, nationwide, and that is the Keystone Party. Uh, you can find them at keystone.party. Um, right now, if you go to that website, it just directs you to the Keystone Party of Pennsylvania. But again, I said they are very keen on expanding. I know a lot of people who have left the, the Libertarian Party uh, in various states, uh, from South Dakota to Illinois, are very keen on on getting chapters started in their states. Again, it, again with these smaller third parties, it's the whole mountain uh, ballot access that you have to kind of kind of figure out. Um, and if you're thinking about doing one of these parties in your state, you really de definitely need to go to your uh, Secretary of State's office and get how do you start a political party in your state? What are the requirements? What are the ballot access requirements? Um, it, it can be daunting, but I think a lot of people will, will you know, are very keen on getting another me messenger out there that isn't necessarily the Libertarian Party. I, I think a lot of people have kind of soured on the Libertarian Party, uh, whether it's messaging or the fact that we've been around 50 years and not done much. Um, that they're open to a, a different voice. And, yeah. you know, we've, we've seen that, that polling says that 60% of Americans want a third option when it comes to elections. I think we should have 10 options. Honestly. We should have all the options. There shouldn't be political parties. But as long as there is, you said it yourself, there are a lot of libertarians that have gone to the Pirate Party, that have gone to the Keystone Party. There are a lot of talent that have gone there too. And just because there's only, you know... Don't count it out. The yeah. workers are the ones that actually make candidates win. <laughs> That's the people that work. It's, and yeah. the workers have left. The They're going to these other parties. So, you know, it may not be such a terrible thing. It may not be such. This may produce amazing choices for us. Sure. Absolutely. You know, it really could. The only other party that, that kind of is getting going as the four party it's andrew yang's party this is a lot i mean if you're very left wing that might be a little more of a home for you um i really haven't searched too much into this party uh yet um i've heard some things from people who have worked with uh people who are trying to get this off the ground and it's i don't know if it's going to survive beyond the next uh, presidential election so uh, just take that one with a grain of salt. Uh, the thing with this party is that it does have a very, very rich uh, founder, uh, Andrew Yang, who could probably single-handedly pay for ballot access. Um, although the ballot access has gotten way more expensive now. If you're going to pay for ballot access, um, a lot of states uh, getting paid signatures is about $7 a signature, where it used to be like a dollar to $3 a signature. So inflation's hitting us all in every aspect of the world. So um, <clears throat> going beyond that, if let's say you don't want to get involved in your political parties or any single issue advocacy, you can always join a civic group. Um, uh, you know, you can always look at things like the Lions Club, the Masons, uh, the Elks Club, the Civitans, the Ruritans. Uh, there are plenty of civic organizations in your community that can use someone to help. Um, and they do good good deeds like the Lions Club. They have the, um, you know, the, they collect eyeglasses they give to kids in Africa. Um, they, the um, Ruritans serve the local community, whether it's civic or, or rural in times of need. Uh, same with the Civitans. The Masons uh, is kind of, an Elks or kind of a fraternal order. Um, but uh, still, they have their uh, volunteer projects that they do. So if you're interested in doing those, that's uh, that's uh, obviously an, uh, another avenue that you can take as far as uh, 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 civic, uh, being involved in your civic community. And again, it, you can combine these with, with your political activism because being involved in these organizations, you're going to learn what your community needs. And uh, that's only going to benefit you if you ever decide to actually run for office or offer up these solutions to your uh, uh, local legislators to, to make changes in your community. Um, you can also go to your local government meetings. They're boring as hell. 
I will tell you they're just fucking dull. Uh, but man, people in the audience at a school board meeting or people in the audience at a uh, city council, county commission, uh, especially when issues get hot, uh, can actually change votes. Um, I know that some city councilors and uh, county commissions do do some tactics to try and tamp down uh, citizen involvement, but oh, yes. uh, get known, get known by your your uh, uh, local folks, um, your your school board, your city council, get known so that when when they see you in the halls, they can stop and talk to you and get your opinion on an issue. It may sway their vote. I, I agree with that. Uh, and, and okay, people are like, I'm, I'm from a small town. I'm not going to matter. No, no, actually, get known in a small town. Yeah. Because I walk into any campaign event and they know me because I'm mouthy and I, I've, I've I've always been mouthy and I grew up here. So we all knew each other. There was only like 400 of us that graduated together in my graduating class. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it matters. Go out to eat here. Somebody will come up and talk to me about a candidate. It happens. Go to the meetings and pay attention because that's where that's where your money's going, people. That's where the decisions are being made. Um, and anything that affects you in your county, that's that's where you start. Because if you don't know what's going on, I don't know how you're going to change anything. Yeah. Um, but no, you're you're exactly right. Um, and and if anybody is watching from Tennessee, there are several organizations, but they're spread out all over the state, and I don't have the information together because I went to the zoo and didn't do my homework. <laughs> and, the zoo is perfectly acceptable. But I I will be happy to direct you. Um, we, we travel around the state a lot. Um, I do have to thank my experience with the Libertarian Party for that. I saw more of Tennessee than I had ever seen previously. But we traveled around and we talked to people. We talked to local business owners. We talked to local organizations. If you are in any of the three parts of Tennessee, I would be happy to direct you to someone. Um, just step in and get involved. Get some soul shine. Yeah. Uh, after all of this, I think that's what we need. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I, again, I'm not here to bash the, the LP. If you're really wanting to stay involved in the Libertarian Party, please do uh, stay involved locally, stay involved in your local affiliate if you want to. Um, uh, again, I, you know, as as somebody who's very liberty oriented, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here's my only advice when it comes to the Libertarian Party is uh, with with national doing what they're doing. Uh, I don't know if you looked at their their Twitter the last few days. It's been highly questionable at best, um, and they've changed it. Uh, the, the person running the Twitter is is Dave Smith, which yikes. Um, but uh, if you want to get stay involved in your local LP, uh, do so. Um, I'm still going to help my friends here in in the local mm -hmm. uh, affiliate to, you know, if they're doing an event then and, and they need bodies, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be happy to, to help them out and do that. Um, if you want to stay involved in your state, that's fine. But I would say as, you know, if you're not down with what happened in Reno, identify your limit. Um, what is, uh, what would LP National have to do in your name? Because remember, uh, as a libertarian, registered libertarian, the, the national committee, although it should be a subordinate committee to every, you know your states and your locals, if we're living a libertarian lifestyle, it should be, you know, the, it should be a bottom up organization instead of a top down organization. But if they start tweeting out things like race realism, um, uh, Holocaust denial, which has been a feature of some of the the affiliates that have been taken over, identify your your. Uh, if, if you see a tweet that says, you know, black people aren't qualified to get uh, the same money as white people, the NFL concussion settlement because they're not smart enough to get the, the money on the baseline, got to go. Uh, you know, and, and I, you know, I, like I said, identify your, your, your limit. And then when they hit that limit, go. Um, you're, not, you're not obligated to stay. Um, I'm a lifetime member twice over. And, you know, I know my name is still up on the website. There's a point where if they start tweeting out stuff, I'm going to email to remove. Um, actually, let me share that. All right, there we go. I'm going to email uh, the operations center at uh, the LP and say, remove my name from the, the Lifetime website. Because I, I just, 
there there's a danger in having your name associated with that 100 percent so. and people have been fired for being associated with something bad previously forever yeah. and even if it's just social media even if you're you know I worked at a gas station years ago and a manager and a couple of employees got fired for basically just complaining about working at a gas station. Like, and it was on MySpace. That's how long ago this was. Right. <laughs> and they got fired. Yeah. Like not just banned silly string. They got <laughs> fired, like lost their jobs. And it was just a joke. It wasn't even, and it was a joke probably, I think it was like clerks. Yeah. Um, associating it and that was it that was the association they made with their and they got fired for that and that was very simple and that was way back in the day so that's that would be my worry with being associated with it plus i i can't look my kids in the eye if i am involved with a questionable organization whether it just be the social media or or more involvement so no I'd step back. Like you said, we can support local, we can support state, we can support the candidates that we've always wanted to support anyway. Yep. Those, those are the ones that I feel the worst for, you know, the candidates and the activists that have put so much into this. And now they're like, uh, uh, you know, yeah. and there are candidates that are not necessarily agreeing with what's going on with LNC and they're going to struggle a bit. Um, yeah. Who knows? And, and, and that's the thing is, is none of us do. We're, we're just going to have to sit back and see what happens. Yeah, so well, that's a little scary. It is. I, I couldn't imagine being somebody like Chase Oliver, the uh, Senate candidate in Georgia. And, uh, you know, he had to actually put out a statement because they were trying to use him as kind of a prop for Gay Pride Month. And uh, he said, I don't support the Libertarian National Committee or the National Party at this point. I'm reporting independent of them as a libertarian from Georgia. And, um, you know, I, I, regardless, I mean, let's say the, because here's the nice thing about Georgia is that if you're a libertarian candidate, you're on the ballot, you are in the debate. Uh, there's a big debate that they do down in uh, Perry, Georgia every year. And um, it's broadcast on the, the PBS affiliates all across the state. But, Let's say the night before that that uh, debate happens, the LP tweets out something just absolutely hateful as far as LGBTQ or uh, African American voters or whatever, and now he's got to answer those questions about a Twitter feed that he has no control over. Uh huh. And that you know, it's his party. It represents his, you know, and yeah, that's got to be an absolutely helpless feeling. Um, and he has worked so hard. Chase Oliver was one of the big ones that brought me into the Libertarian Party. Listening to him on podcasts, listening to him on interviews, debates, all of it. He was the only one speaking up for the people that I think need to be spoken up for. Yeah. And I would play them even while I was, you know, cooking dinner, doing dishes with Chase Oliver in the background because it was inspiring. He is inspiring. And he has the best voice. Oh, my God. He has the best voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think he shook off his Tennessee twang and now like he has a little bit of George. I don't know. There's something yeah. about it. You're not wrong. Very nice. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the organizations. Um, if you have any questions or need me to share those out, I definitely will. Um, if you're looking for uh, activities to do in your local community, reach out to me. I'll be happy to uh, point you in the right direction, uh, marrying up what you're passionate about and what uh, needs to be done in your local community. So um, let's go to the news quiz. You ready? Oh, this is terrible. No. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I've purposely like not been in the know this week. <laughs> That's fine. So have I. I've, I've, oh, let's fill ooh. it together then. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to totally <laughs> on the quiz. That's fine. That's fine. There's no price to, to pay for losing on the quiz here. So the five things weekly news quiz. Can we see it? Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's go to question number one. June is the month a global community celebrates freedom after struggling for decades to overcome prejudice. What does June mark? Black History Month, Native American Heritage Month, Women's History Month, or Pride Month? Pride Month. 
this is a very easy one yes pride month um also uh but we do notice uh even with black history month it, it is juneteenth as well so yes. uh, that's awesome uh but yes pride month we are very happy for pride month um yes i know a lot of people get pissed off at the the corporatization of pride you know how everybody turns their logos into into rainbows and i get the frustration with that um honestly every day is a day to celebrate um your lgbt uh friends and family or yourself if you are the, the community um it's every day is the day to be that out be an ally uh if you're not um and if you're going to be a dick bag and, and make a, uh, a post about it uh, just don't just scroll past that's the way to deal with it just scroll past yes and bless your heart honestly if it offends you so much that all the corporate places are doing you know there there are uh gay artists or gay candidates or anybody else that you could actually give that money directly to one of your gay homies so yeah. there's ways around it yeah exactly <laughs> um now i do i do i do like some of the posts where they they've called out some of these corporations where they have oh, put yeah. pride stuff on their on and then you see for uh less friendly areas like their middle eastern uh conglomerates uh their their offshoots or their chinese offshoots that they're not doing that yes. and I, I get calling them out for doing that um but you know let's just celebrate i i don't understand people who don't like celebrate like exactly the world is shitty we should take every chance to celebrate Absolutely. and if you've never been to a pride parade go no. <laughs> they're ball so and uh, we need to start one here in martinsburg because i don't think there is a pride parade here oh is there going to be silly string there needs yeah. to be silly string all the colors like you could you Actually, could you could make a rainbow. I, I, I think a lot of parades do uh, uh, no longer want you to do silly string because it is a mess and it, it's chemicals and might end up in the uh, well. Water maybe, maybe this will be in in your yard. Yeah, and yeah there we go. That's the parade. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just stand out on my lawn, just waving. Right you here. know that we'll all but love that though. <laughs> like we will love that nice uh <laughs> let's go to question number two question number two with president joe biden facing near record low approval ratings five months before the critical midterm elections what is the white house trying to focus attention on student loan debt ukraine the economy or climate change this is a tough one because i like you i have not really been paying attention to what uh mumble does he here. even know like has he told us what uh, is so he likes tapioca pudding and he's Stop. wondering who turned the the channel off of judge Wilder. um uh, i don't know maybe the economy which is stupid but whatever yeah don't focus on the bad shit going on um yeah it's either the economy or climate change i think the climate change is probably a stronger issue for joe biden to to press I, I wouldn't know it because it has absolutely nothing to do with anything else. No. Going on. <gasps> Which one was it? It was the economy. You were right. Oh, I was wrong. I'm a decent guesser. Check that out. AJ's two for two. <laughs> and one for one for two. Context clues or everything. And this is why he's got near record low approval ratings. You don't <laughs> highlight the crap that you're really struggling with. Yes. <laughs> like, well, he's struggling with so much. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but climate change would probably be the one that he should focus on just because that's something that Democrats are a lot stronger than Republicans on at this point. Student loan debt, uh, until he actually forgives student loans, he's not going to get any bump out of that. Um, I don't because, even understand how that would work. Well, I think people who are banking on student loan forgiveness should understand how what that what goes into that law. Um, the, the one thing that can happen, and I know because uh, the federal government does have a student loan forgiveness uh, program for, for federal employees, if your loan is forgiven, it is converted to income for that year and you have to pay taxes on it. So you could have, yeah, yay, your $100,000 uh, 
student loan is written off, but then you also have to pay taxes on on a hundred thousand dollars. So you know, just be careful what you wish for because you might just get it, and then all of a sudden you're owing Uncle Sam a crap ton of money uh, versus that. Uh, in in yeah, student loan payments can be a bastard too. But if you, if you can refinance them, refinance them. Uh, but anyway, uh, question number three. 75th Cannes Film Festival recently honored many of the top talents in the film industry. Uh, what is the highest prize awarded to the Can at the Cannes Film Festival? Uh, the Grand Prix, the Palme d'Or, the Moliere, or the Chevalier? That's a lot of French. I have no idea. And I took two years of French. Just <laughs> for the record. I want to say the Palme d'Or because that is the top film prize, but I, there may be a top prize for like lifetime achievement. Go with your I'm first talking. instinct. That's how you take these multiple choice tests. That's how you do it. First That's instinct, right. go. Hey, yeah, all right. The Palme d'Or is the <laughs> most pre prestigious prize awarded at the Cannes Film Festival. Everybody do the Can Can. Uh, this is uh, this year. The it was awarded to Triangle of Sadness, a uh, story about my life. Oh no! Directed by Ro uh, Ruben Oscar. So, <laughs> don't mind me. I'm a nut. Uh, question number four: A massive glass bridge set a Guinness World Record this week. Where is it located? At a place I do not want to go. Uh, Spain, Dubai, Vietnam, or Italy. Spain. You know, yeah, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna write off Dubai immediately because of the, the forested area here. Although in the mountains they they do tend to get a lot more rain, uh, so there could be stuff there. Uh, Vietnam or Italy? I don't think Vietnam's. I mean, Asia is has done kind of a lot of these uh, uh, bridges, glass bridges. Um, I don't know, man. This one's hard. I can see Italy <laughs> doing it. All right, but we'll go with yours, Spain. I have no idea. Uh, Vietnam. <laughs> so it was Vietnam. Yeah, there. Asia. There are quite a few glass uh, glass bridges. I will never go across. I am deathly afraid of heights. Oh. I am. I I'm not good with heights. So a glass bottom walkway in Vietnam, which opened to much public fanfare, has been declared the world's longest bridge of its kind by the Guinness Book of World Records. It's suspended approximately 492 feet above the ground and measures 2,073 feet in length. Um, I would like to think that I could do it, but I'd have to do it with somebody that wasn't going to be a jerk and be like, oh, it's cracking, or, you know, like, <laughs> like freak me out. Like somebody that's supportive can walk with me, but otherwise, like, I, I don't think I, I just, I just be like five feet in and pee myself. Oh, I would but like I, to think I could do it. I so I am like I, I went to Bridge Day in West Virginia. So every day, every year in West Virginia, there's the New River Gorge Bridge, which spans across uh, the New River uh, uh, near uh, Fayette, uh, West Virginia. And every year they close off half the bridge to allow people to jump off the bridge using uh, either base jumping or uh, there's actually a catapult that flings people off the bridge. That's unnerving when you see that the first time you're like, what the fuck was this? <laughs> I'm getting flung off the bridge and they're, you know, they're, they fall. <laughs> I would never do that. And there's also people underneath the bridge that are bungee jumping. Uh, I will never bungee jump because have you ever seen that picture of the woman who bungee jumped and then crapped herself? No. Oh, it's awful. That, that sounds awful. Because it was like a state fair bungee jump. Oh so was, like she's dangling above the state fair with crap up her back. Oh. <laughs> oh you know, she never lived that down. She had to move I would have been a whole new town. Like yeah, three states over. Yeah. It's awful. Never would have done that. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I would never, uh, never bungee jump. Um, 
So I did click dive out, once. right? Well, I did. I did click dive once off of uh, about a forty foot uh, cliff in uh, New Mexico at a reservoir there, and um, boy, that I don't know how my legs worked to actually propel me off the. the I thought I was just gonna like my legs would fail and I just <laughs> roll down the cliff, hitting rocks all the way down, and kill myself. Uh, uh, but uh, managed to fling myself off and. The only thing I'll tell you is that 40 feet takes a while. Like you, 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 I mean, watching it probably takes like a second for you to, to, to hit the water. But when you're in the air, mm -hmm. it takes forever to get to the water. <laughs> it's like, this is taking a while. <laughs> Should I grow wings? <laughs> I jumped off one cliff at uh, Fall Creek Falls when I was uh, maybe 10 or something. And I, it was so bad, I'll never do it again. Um, yeah. I hit the water weird. So there was a smack, but it was like my thigh. And then, I don't know, I nearly drowned myself. I got up coughing and spewing and snotting. And yeah, and if you don't go to those places by yourself. You go with a bunch of freaking people. So I was like, yeah. you know, snotty water girl for a minute. It's awful. I uh, almost cut myself in half. I hit it. Oh. Basically, it was almost a good the best cannonball but it it hurt my butt <laughs> put it that way it hurt my butt no, that's the wild we went from butt. we went from walking across the bridge to jumping into weird crap so yeah. <laughs> all right question number five there we go uh in the wake of several mass shootings in the u.s canadian prime minister justin trudeau announced the introduction of a bill that would do what in his country freeze handgun ownership Seize military style firearms from owners, punish gun owners for with hefty fines, install medical det metal detectors in all Canadian schools. Uh, I, I, believe, don't know. I believe this is freeze handgun ownership. Um, uh, no, no new gun sales in the, the, the nation of Canada. Uh, I will tell you, um, a lot of people are afraid of gun confiscation in the United States. There are more guns than Americans. Uh, that would probably be the bloodiest thing that the, the government could ever do. Uh, uh, I don't if you're gun confiscation, I do think that at some point they're going to try and redo the, um, uh, the, the assault weapons ban that they did uh, in the early 90s. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that it's going to have that, that great of effect. I do think that they're trying to uh, bring in some other uh, more mental health things uh, uh, to the bill that they're talking about in the United States. But again, I don't think it's going to work. But And we'll get to that uh, here towards the end of the show. But um, let's talk with Freeze and gun ownership. Yes. So Trudeau announced the introduction of a bill that would place na a national freeze on handgun ownership in, across Canada. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. Um, Canada does have a parliamentary system, so he does have a majority in both. Uh, well, he has the majority in the lower house. Um, I used to know this um, about the Canadian system, but I, I'm not sure what say the upper house, the Senate, has because they're you know it's a it's not an elected body. It's nominated by uh, prime ministers, and, and uh, I think the, the provinces actually nominate a few uh, senators as well. Uh, but I don't think they really have much in the way of uh, power uh, in, in the country. So um, it'll probably pass in Canada, um, but we'll, we'll see. Let's do question number six. Some military officials expressed its expressed concern that Russia might retaliate in response to a decision made by the United States this week to do what? Uh, send troops to Poland, indefinitely ban travel from Russia to the United States, supply advanced weapons to Ukraine, or close the Russian embassy in Washington, D.C.? Uh, supply weapons to Ukraine. I believe so as well, correct? Uh, Biden said this week the U.S. is providing advanced weapons to Ukraine. Um, I, among these weapons I hear are long range, uh, missiles. Um, and I think that's what the, the concern is that Ukraine will use the missiles to hit targets in Russia. 
and um, yeah, so they're saying that would be a direct provocation. Um, gay nuclear war? Ooh. I don't know. Oak Ridge, like, yeah, right there. So, sneak. <laughs> I know. Somebody asked me if uh, what I would do if, if nuclear war happened, like a you know just all out nuclear war happened, and people are like, "Well, you just go here, you go here, you go here." I'm like, "I'm going right to Washington D.C., right to the mall, and I'm going to fold out chair, I'm going to sit there with a hot dog and a stick and just wait for the white flash." There's just there's no good that can come out of making it through the nuclear war. Watch the world burn. But good food. I mean, <laughs> bring stuff for s'mores. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm with you 100%. <laughs> uh, the uh, question number seven, what travel industry leaders, uh, what are travel industry leaders pressing the Biden administration to do? Uh, require masks fl on flights again? Punish unruly passengers with jail time? Provide stimulus payments to overworked flight, uh, flight crews? or end vaccine requirements for international travelers. I have not paid attention to this one at all. The only thing that I know about the airline industry is the they're running out of pilots. But that's all that's like all that I've heard about it this week. So people always want money. Go with stimulus. Yeah. I mean I don't understand why we're running out of pilots. We've been fighting oh not oh. Like that. They want to end vaccine requirements for national travels, which, yeah, you know, makes sense. I don't you know why anybody would want a vaccine requirement, period, but yeah. that's just me, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't understand why there's a, a shortage of, of pilots. We've, we've been fighting wars for the last 30 years consecutive. I think the problem is that they offered so many of them early retirement when people weren't traveling as much because of COVID restrictions. Which is stupid because you, it wasn't like we were never going to travel again. Yes. I mean, there, there were so many mistakes made. Like, oh, I know. Let's just not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the travel industry leaders were pressing Biden administration to end the requirement that, vaccina uh, that vaccinated international travelers take a COVID-19 test. Um, before flying to the United States. So it's not really requiring uh, or allowing unvaccinated international travelers. It's just saying that vaccinated international travelers don't have to show a COVID-19 test before flying. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, groups representing several major airlines say the requirement does not match the current threat from COVID-19, which, yeah, I, I, how many people caught COVID from the uh, Libertarian National Convention? <laughs> I don't know. Did you say Jonathan Reels t-shirt? I, I I just want his uh, don't vote for shit asses t-shirt. Oh, dude, I have one. Nice. Um, I have the first run. Nice. Yes. Love that. Um, no, what is this t-shirt? The t-shirt is I went to the Libertarian Convention 2022 and all I got was COVID. <laughs> yes. Yeah, apparently the uh, the region that I'm in uh, region five was one of the super spreader events. Oh, well, there have been a lot. I've talked to, I've talked to a lot of people this week. Cause I mean, I, I'm a nurse and I do that. I just like insert myself in people's health problems. Uh, and I'm like, Hey, I'm here, you know, uh, but I've talked to a lot of people and they, they're feeling pretty rough. Um, yeah. And it's not to, to make fun of people catching COVID. No, not That's at all. Bastard. Um, and it actually, it was it was somebody that that has COVID that, that thought of the T-shirt. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah, it, uh, it's amazing that we actually, in the height of the, you know, first real, first wave, um, eh, it was really kind of between the first and second wave of, of COVID. We did the in-person convention in Orlando in 2020, and nobody reported getting COVID. Um, but I will say that people were uh, at the, the 2020 convention as reasonably as possible. They were wearing masks. They were uh, like I wore a face shield, those plastic face shields. Um, they, they did maintain some semblance of distancing. The uh, place that we held it was well ventilated. It was, a, I mean, just a massive 
all that we, I mean, we could have fit. I mean, we had like 700 people there. Um, we could have fit into very easily into probably a quarter of the, the uh, location that we're at. And um, maybe even 20% of the location that we're at. But uh, ventilation was fine. I know, I know that a lot of people reported that the building itself was very poorly ventilated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I saw the pictures from the floor. Everyone was pushed up together. Um, and stuffy and hot and yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was... It was a recipe, but it may, you know, even if it wasn't COVID, it, you know, anything could have run through that that group. So, well, there's been a lot of people that have also been sick, not not with COVID, but as soon as they got into like the desert, because that is such a different climate yep. than what everybody was used to, they immediately had issues. Well, the, so there, there is a lot of that as well. And the casino itself allowed smoking indoors. Oh my god! Have you ever been to a smoky casino before? It's awful. It's like a throwback. To I can't the remember the last time I saw somebody smoke inside. Yeah, it's a throwback to the seventies, and, and you know, uh, every bar that you go to is is just a you know a, a cloud of smoke. Um, yeah, it, it really is just an awful throwback. But <laughs> I can understand why people got sick out, out there, even if it was COVID or just seasonal allergies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's pretty rough, and yeah, you're right. The uh, the high mountain climate is generally drier, uh, and people who are used to very wet, uh, humid climates that that will really screw up your sinuses. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, flying, and some people had a really crazy trip there where they flew to like nine different cities and then got to Reno. So all of that, you know, they're wore out. They're wore oh, yeah. out. That you know suppresses yeah. your immune system. That this is not, and I mean, you know, they're libertarian, so they're drinking, they're 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 yeah. partying. So that also suppresses your immune system. I'm it's just a, a monkey pox. disaster regardless. I'm surprised there was a monkeypox there. Oh, that, that point was made as well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I hope for everyone to recover. And, and recover well. And, uh, Keep your sense of humor because y'all are hilarious right now. <laughs> you feel awful, but you're still hilarious. So good That's job. Right. That's right. Um all right, so new research suggests that COVID-19 will circulate at high levels throughout the summer. Uh, what are many medical professionals saying is needed to curb the expected surge in cases? Uh, upgraded vaccines and boosters, widespread lockdowns, a nationwide mask mandate, or limiting air travel? I'm going to say vaccines. Uh, boosters. Probably boosters is what they're recommending. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Just put this in your body. 3,000 weeks to flatten the curve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, if you're, I, I'm traveling uh, next month. My, in fact, the, the traveling you're describing is, is what I'm going to have to do uh, going out to Albuquerque. I'm going to fly. I'm flying to Minneapolis from Baltimore. And then a flight from Minneapolis down to Atlanta. <laughs> it's like, do you ever see uh, like the uh, old Indiana Jones movies at the beginning of the movie where they do the little flight sequence? Where you wow. Yeah, I love Indiana Jones. Basically what my flight to Albuquerque is going to look like. like why am I going to Minneapolis to Atlanta? It's a Delta flight, so I think i got to hit all of their hubs. Oh, uh, well, okay. Vitamins. Uh, compression stockings, yes. you know, those are good because you're going to yep. be flying a lot. Um, stay hydrated and be as well rested as one can be in this weird ass timeline we are in. Yeah. Um, those are those are my those are my nurse AJ suggestions for everyone this week. I wish, <laughs> they had, so they got. Some, I wish somebody had some suggestion, suggestions for not losing my luggage because I know that that's like a hundred percent chance now that I'm going to be. Well, I've never flown, so I'm not the person to give you advice there. You need to fly. Flying's fun. You just talked about how you've got to go to 12 different places before you get to where you're going. I could just go. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I like driving. If 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 Albuquerque wasn't a you know 25 hour trip, I would. I, I've done, I've driven to Albuquerque before from Atlanta. Yeah. Um, 17 hours in a car all the way to Shamrock, Texas, the first day. 
Um, that was a that was a fun drive. Um, you should work at Preston Stockings when you do that too. Just yeah, since, you know, I'm going to throw that in. <laughs> I did not, but I was also uh, yeah, ten years younger, so. I don't care. Yeah. Long trips, man. That that increases your chance for DVTs, which increases your chances for pulmonary embolisms. Those yeah. are bad and uncomfortable and awful, and you don't want to have it. No. I had a friend that almost died of. Mm -hmm. uh, Queen Elizabeth, longest serving monarch in British history, is celebrating the Platinum Jubilee this weekend. How many years has she been on the throne? Uh, 30, 50, 40, or 70? Is it 50? No, it is 70. Is it 70? It is 70. Oh. Uh, she came to power in 52, uh, officially. She wasn't like coronated until 53, but she, uh, her father uh, passed away in, in uh -huh. December of uh, 52. And that's when she ascended to the throne. See, I want to know what she's doing. She's not doing well. Well, I mean, what she what she has done to get to this point then. Yeah. And if uh, it was compression stockings. <laughs> could have been. Yeah. Uh, four day holiday. So yeah, she, they had a four day holiday. We'll get into this in a, in a minute uh, to celebrate her 70th year on the throne. And final question. What year did CNN make its debu debut as a 24 hour cable news channel? 1970, 1980, 1990, or 2000? I know this one. I have no idea because I, I don't watch. Yeah, it's 1980. Um, uh, they used to be a semi decent news channel, um, but now it's just them screaming about Republicans, which yeah, you should scream about Republicans, but you should also scream about Democrats. You should scream about everybody that's jacking it up. Yeah, yeah. Don't care. Right. Don't care what what they do. Yeah, it, uh, CNN launched on uh, June first, nineteen eighty. Uh, so it's forty two years since the network uh, began covering uh, news. And you know, first ten years of uh, of CNN, it was a rather small. Uh, cable channel, like I mean, everyone had it on their cable systems. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like uh, a lot of people watched it. It wasn't until 1990 in the Gulf War, the first one, where 21. people started watching uh, because they, you know, of course, Baghdad is, you know, several hours ahead of uh, Washington, D.C. or, you know, the rest of the United States. So um, they were the only ones covering it. And I remember, you know, it was uh, John Holloman, uh, Bernard Shaw, and I. I can't remember the third guy, Peter something, uh, who were um, the, the people covering the, the Iraq war. Uh, and uh, it kind of made CNN's name, um, but they really trashed it over the last, ever since Trump came to office, the CNN has just been awful. Everything's just gone downhill. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are more, much more interested in, in crapping on on one side and, and really just giving a softball to, to the other side. So um, if you can watch BBC, um, uh, don't trust BBC on British coverage, but when it comes to uh, international coverage, they're probably the best uh, if you get a chance to watch them. Um, all right. So that is the news quiz. We got seven out of 10. That's a solid C. Uh, I'm very, yeah, I'm okay with that this week. <clears throat> What did we miss? We missed uh, missed the airlines. We missed the bridge, and we missed uh, President Putin. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. With that. All right. So uh, this week, uh, former United States Representative Denver Riggleman, um, he has indicated that he's no longer in the GOP. He's left and has become an independent. Um, this is newsworthy in the fact that at one point he did uh, uh, Big Bigfoot erotica. Um, I'm sorry, what? He wrote, he wrote Bigfoot erotica. Now I think uh, I think it's uh, a parody that he did, but yeah, there's uh, books that he had authored about Bigfoot erotica. Um, how he got elected to Congress, I have no idea. He ran in a a, a fairly, I want to say libertarian leaning republican district in central virginia um but uh yeah he's he's left the gop um i'm surprised that the uh bigfoot erotica didn't get him out of the gop but 
because um, you know how they are about the culture war. Uh, but hey, hey, if he can make money off of that, more power to him. And oh, look, yeah. people are making money on 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 OnlyFans all the damn time. So whatever you make your money on, more power to you. How's his voting record? That's what I'm curious. Like, how does he vote? How, how does what? He what, didn't vote enough with Donald Trump. And that was his problem. He didn't vote enough with Donald Trump, uh, and he lost a primary to a Trumper, and that Trumper, I think, lost the uh, congressional seat to a Democrat. So, um, another thing Trump has ruined. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. Another thing. It's all his fault. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, actually, I know a lot of people in, in Virginia who know Denver, and he's actually they, they actually say he's a really nice guy and fairly libertarian on some issues. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be speculation as to uh, with the Libertarian Party of Virginia, if they can get him to run for like senator, governor or something like that for ballot access. I don't know that it'll work, um, but I'm sure that speculation has already started. Um, so, yeah, we just talked about the 70th, 70th planet, platinum anniversary of the uh, Queen of England. Uh, she's been in such poor health that she only participated in the very end today where um, uh, she appeared on the balcony, um, kind of like when they do the, the marriage and they, they come out and they wave on the balcony. That was all she was able to do. She looked very frail, um, uh, and she but she didn't participate in any of the other things. They did this really creepy thing where um, they, they brought out the golden carriage, um, which is, you know, one of the, the high holy pieces of the British mar monarchy. It's a carriage of gold. And what they did was they put on like a TV screen inside the carriage and showed the, it was like, look, if you looked in there, you could see the prince, uh, see her when she was coronated, when she was like, you know, she's like 90s now. So in her 20s when she was coronated as, as queen. Um, it was really creepy. It was always like looking like looking at a ghost in the carriage. Um, and then uh, you know they've they've had parties, uh, big concert, and all that stuff. Um, I, I've seen the numbers before that the British monarchy, the amount of money that they bring into the country as far as tourism and all that stuff goes, they're fairly re revenue neutral. But I, you know, I just think. Hey, yeah, it's cultural. I, I'm I'm probably never going to get it. It's the um, the events of uh, 1775 through 1783, all inclusive, yeah. and 1814 through 18, right? 1812 through 1814. I mean, I don't have to give a shit what the British people think of their monarch. So, I I mean, it's it's celebrity to them. Yeah. I mean, like America. I guess you know we worship Hollywood or whatever the crap. And they have, you know, yes, they have their celebrities as well. But these are these are the real celebrities. These are the always celebrities um, oh, yeah. because their actors, you know, come in and out of fashion um, pretty regularly. Theirs is almost uh, worse than Hollywood. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> do you think that she has just stayed alive so long because she's absolutely determined that her son is not going to be? Do you think that's what it is? It's just determination. Well, that's that's the interesting thing because she it, she did uh, release a statement after the uh, uh, after the balcony appearance, um, saying that she's going to continue to reign, um, that she's not going to step aside. Um, uh, I guess she's going to wait until uh, you know they're going to pry it from her cold dead cold dead hands. I think is is pretty much how they're going to do it, uh, which is pretty much how most monarchies transition um but uh yeah charles charles is getting up there too i mean he's like i think in his 70s now um there, there's been a movement to try and get them you know him to kind of abdicate to william to william um but i don't know uh the converse from this uh there's news out of rome that uh pope francis might be stepping down it would be the second consecutive pope to abdicate uh, the papacy rather than uh, serve until they, they kick it. Um, I was thinking, I, have I been alive long enough for there to be this many popes in my lifetime? I mean, I'm not Catholic or like even like remotely involved, but this is a lot of popes in my lifetime. 
Well, You're, yeah, because it used to be like they're you know sixty years or something, right? Well, you know, everyone got spoiled with uh, with uh, Pope John Paul, who served from the uh, late seventies until uh, like two thousand six yeah. or so. Yeah. Um, and then you had Benedict, who served for a few years, and and he retired. And then you have Francis come in and uh, possibly is going to retire. So yeah, I mean, and we're we're kind of cycling through through popes here pretty quickly. They need to find a young pope, a hip pope. I think, well, I think there's always a reaction when a pope serves for a, just a tremendous amount of time, um, which John Paul did, mm -hmm. um, that they want to put in an older pope so that they don't sit there for so long and get so much power accumulated uh, up under them. Um, but, yeah. I. They apparently don't have the stamina, though. So what's, the, you know... Well, they make them wear the heavy ass clothes and the hat. That's what it is. That's it. I mean, I would, I would hunch over if I had to wear that hat all the time. Yeah. That's, I, I mean, I bet they have good chiropractors, though. You would hope so. I mean, they're the Pope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, know, I know that they have some massage services probably there. Oh, yeah. do they? They're, that's a different type of massage service. So. Uh, that, that would be a whole different subject. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we were talking about celebrities. The the trial that just never seemed to end finally did this week, and uh, Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp in the defamation trial. Technically, they both won, but I think we all lost out of that one. We definitely lost as a society, because uh, that's just no matter which direction you come from it. It's it's a shame that it has taken place. It's a shame that we got to know every single detail. Of their marriage, and we still don't know who's in I, Maxwell's well, directory and book. Correct? There's, there's no, uh, there's no good that came out of this trial. I mean, think about how much money the the state of Virginia uh, had to pay to put that on to, uh, you know, pay for jurors, uh, the judge, all the time that was in because this was a long ass trial, and this wasn't the first one. They actually had a trial over in, in uh, the UK, UK last year. Um, that uh, I believe Amber Heard won that one. Uh, now, Johnny Depp technically wins on money because he uh, Amber Heard was awarded $2 million. Johnny Depp was awarded five or $15 million. So he comes out $13, uh, $13 million ahead on this one. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. He's, Sorry. Uh, um, but, yeah, I... I mean, now that you have Johnny Depp winning, technically winning this one, and Amber Heard, do they go to like a third country now and have like a tie-breaking trial? Definitely. Oh no, trial? she's I going hope. to appeal it and, and waste more money. Oh god. Because her lawyers already said she can't pay it. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's like yeah. awesome. Can y'all just agree to stay away from each other? I mean, can we? Can we? Can we treat them like the toddlers? That, that all celebrities apparently are. Yeah, I mean, just stop. Just stay away from each other. Stop talking about each other. Just, just stop. I think um, the I think the, the the solution here was as soon as the trial was over, they both get uh, loaded up into a rocket and fired into the sun. <laughs> done. Done. You can you can film it. You can put a camera in there and you just hear their conversations the entire time. As they, if you really want to find that out fire it into the sun and just be done with it. I was never a fan of her before, but after watching what I actually did watch, because I did watch some of it. Um, no, if I never hear her again, that, that'd be fine. Yeah, like her yeah. manner, everything. It was just so much. I think, I think if people went in there as fans of John, of Johnny Depp, uh, they think Johnny Depp won. And I think the casual observer probably think that Johnny Depp won. Um, uh, I don't know that there's a whole lot of love for, for Amber Heard. Um, but I, again, if I, if I don't ever hear from either one of them again, I'll be happy. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I saw one part of the Caribbean movie and that's enough for me. I don't need to see any more. And his, uh, well, I don't think that, I, I don't know what Disney would have to do to get him back. And, and it doesn't matter one way or the other because, He's Johnny freaking Depp. 
He doesn't yeah. need damn Disney. Well, it, it, really and truly. And it, his, his, so uh, his clone ads are just annoying. I hate his clone ads. The Dior clone ads. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, this week, uh, tre U.S. Treasury Secretary and former head of the Federal Reserve, one of our favorite organizations, Janet Yellen admits that she was wrong in, a, uh, in that inflation would be transitory. She, th she thought that uh, we just have a little blip of inflation, we go right back. Um, uh, she's acting like no one could have known that printing that much money and handing it out like, you know, uh, rupees at a, at a rave um, would, uh, would be crapping the economy right now. So... Who could have predicted that? I mean, honestly, it's not like every single person that I've ever met in my entire life thought that was a bad idea or anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and here, here's the thing that I always point out when, when people talk about the, uh, the money that was printed out is that they printed out trillions and trillions of dollars. And we got, we got a tax prebate on, on uh, like $3,200. Like that, that, that's what every man, woman, man and woman in this country, they didn't even do it for children. They, the, the last one did do uh, earned, earned income tax credits for children. But um, you had to pay that shit back. Mm -hmm. There was there was definite ramifications that no one told about. Um, the, a lot the, of kids did get the, the PEBT cards. Yeah. And I'm waiting for there to be some something about that. I'm, I'm just waiting. Yeah, because any school age children, I, a child, I believe, um, got one of those. Yeah, and the people that were connected, the 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 multi millionaires, mm -hmm. the multi billionaires, they're just fine. They got they got a lot of money. They got mm -hmm. most of that money, and they got that debt forgiven, and that debt was not converted to income to. Uh, be paid back later, like those student loan debts will be. Yes. So, yeah. But who who, who didn't get stimulus packages? Those those mom and pop businesses. Exactly. The rest of us, yeah. Um. Finally, uh, we didn't get a chance to cover this um, because we we're off last week. But the uh, Uvalde school ma massacre. This um. Uh, it's it's such an at maddening. Uh, episode. There were so many failures in this whole whole system. Um, there are so many unanswered questions as to, you know, how did a, a young kid like him get a uh, brand new truck and, and brand new guns? Um, very expensive guns, by the way. Um, yes. How, what, I mean, how, how are you as a police officer? You've got weapons. Um, how do you sit outside of a classroom hearing you know that they heard mm -hmm. 40 or 19 kids and two adults get shot because that school resource officer followed the kid into the building so he was in there right after that happened mm -hmm. how do you stand outside that door and not kick the door in uh you know do you go around to the other? I mean, I don't know what the school is like. Did they have exterior windows or anything like that? Was there, there was no attempt to try and rescue those children. As, as a mom, I, I've, I've, I've talked to, to my, my boys about it because they have grown up as always preparing for active shooters. They, they do that. They, they make sure that they can see the door. The, for a while, they would always find where they could fit when they were smaller. Yeah. And, and I could hide in that cabinet. And, and that is terrifying that, yeah. you know, they, they've spent their entire lives thinking about that at school when it's supposed to be, you know, the SROs are supposed to be there to protect the school. They're not just there to handle like bullying situations, like their actual job yeah. is to keep everybody safe. Right. What, what were these guys doing instead? Keeping themselves safe. And yeah. that's, not the job that they literally signed up for. But so. I will say that the Supreme Court has repeatedly said that law enforcement officers have no duty to put themselves in danger for protecting anyone else. Uh, I think Castle Rock versus Ca Gonzalez is probably the landmark case in that where 
cops watched a woman get killed by her uh, husband who had a restraining order um, and didn't do anything. In fact, there was a news story that came out today. Uh, Tempe cops watched a man drown, told him, hey, we're not going in after you. The dude drowned. There was a local thing, and it wasn't this county. It was a couple counties over, same thing. Yeah. Because uh, it was, I, I'm not endangering myself to save you. And it was like. Yeah. Uh, protect, and, uh, protect and serve is all. Only the, the, the self is silent when it comes to that. It's self-protecting, self-serving. It sure That's seems it. to be. I, I, I don't know. I know that there aren't all bad. I no. get that. But in this particular instance, I can definitely say they are all bad. Yeah. They are all bad. I'm sorry. I don't care what your orders were. You sit there and listen to that when you've got the equipment and the training to know how to save them. Yes. And that's, that's, the, hard, that's the unforgivable thing is mm -hmm. that they, they actually worked far harder to keep people from uh, getting to their kids than they oh, did gosh. to save those kids. No, those videos tore me apart. I, yeah. I, I just can't. Uh, yeah, I I couldn't imagine being a parent in that situation and watching cops just kind of swap thumbs if they're standing outside or standing outside the room. You know, oh, we were waiting for a key from the... You guys got battering rams. You got... Hell, drive the... You know, I'm, I'm sure Uvalde has a, you know, one of those Bearcat tank things. Drive the damn... <laughs> Yeah, drive, drive the vehicle into the damn building, breach the building. Mm -hmm. um, For that matter, it's Texas. Somebody's got a big ass truck, y'all. Yeah. I mean, really, there, there, there are so many ways that this could have gone, and yeah. it only went south. It, that, I mean, I, I don't, I don't even understand it. This one makes the least amount of sense. And I mean, I was in high school when Columbine happened, mm -hmm. so. That was, I guess, my junior year, I think, maybe junior, senior year. But I remember going to the auditorium right after that. And I remember Marilyn Manson t-shirts and, and trench coats. Those were banned. And I'll see how well it worked. Yeah. But now we're at this point where even the people that are assigned to help these kids aren't doing that. And this is, what, the, second, what do we do? And this is the second high profile uh, incident where the, the school resource officer uh, failed to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas in, in Parkland, Florida. Same thing happened. Shot started. The school resource officer in that case actually bugged out and, and hid. Um, they tried to fire him, rightly. Um, but again, because of those Supreme Court cases, they couldn't fire him. They had, they had to give him his job back and let him retire. So you know, those people in the state of Florida are paying for his retirement uh, to just an absolute coward. Um, but, you know, this whole issue is not going to get solved again. I mean, I know that they're they're talking about some kind of compromise in the Senate. Um, but here, here's the cycle of what we're going to see is that they're going to ta start talking about, uh, you know, gun confiscations and things like that. And, and people are going to get scared that they're going to start taking guns. And what you're going to see is uh, gun owners going to the local gun shop and buying a, a crap ton of, of guns, crap ton of ammo. Um, the, and all the Democrats and the Republicans are going to do about this issue is fundraise off. That's all they're going to do. They're going to send out mailers saying, help us defeat the, the dastardly Republicans who, uh, say no to gun control, uh, knowing that they're never going to get that, that, you know, that level of majority to pass any kind of, um, especially constitutional legislation to, to, um, stop guns. Um, the Republicans are going to say, help us defend uh, 2A rights, although we'll ban guns if, if minorities get them. Uh, you know, uh, but yeah, so uh, it, all it is, is just a, it's a fundraising ploy. It's, you know, it is a situation that does need to be addressed. It's not something that you can just address by banning weapons, um, which I think is a comical thing that they're trying to push that we should ban weapons when the people who have weapons who are supposed to do something didn't do a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what was it? There was a, there was a shooting a couple of days later that a woman had her gun and she took care of the problem. In West Virginia. Yeah. It was a, Thank you. 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, in Charleston, West Virginia, she uh, stopped a guy who uh, pulled out a um, rifle and tried tried to shoot some people, and she shot him and, and took him out. So, um, I mean, we need to get over the idea that taking away that prohibition has ever worked. Prohibition has never worked. It has only made the problem worse. Whatever the problem was, whatever the problem was then, no. Um, Medical care, mental health care in this country is ridiculous. Um, but no, uh, gun free zones, it only works if everybody's gun free. Yeah, see, there's, there's some of the solutions they need to start talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't say arm every teacher, but I will say that allow teachers who get certified training in active threat, active shooting training. Mm -hmm. allowed to carry on campus yes and remove make sure that signs. training is ongoing yeah remove mm -hmm. or at least not advertise the fact that you're a gun-free campus um i think that all that does is signal to, to people to do bad things and you know a lot of uh, the the two worst shootings that we had were at elementary schools because generally a lot of locations don't do school resource officers at the elementary school. They put them in middle schools and high schools because that's where you actually get the student on student violence mm -hmm. um, that they want them there to, to prevent. Elementary school is not that that big. So that Texas had a, a school resource officer there is, I mean, it didn't work, but um, I know that a lot of police organizations are saying, Give us more school resource officers. I just don't think that this, that's the solution. Um, well, are they going to give us a guarantee that they're going to do their job? I well, mean, yeah, they are doing their job. Yeah, um, I mean, we can have as many bodies as we want if they're, they tuck tail and run. Yeah. What does it matter? It's not going to help us. So. Um, I know the, the training. I mean, I worked for the, I, I worked for the sheriff's department. Um, I, I, as a nurse, but I mean, we did go to the range and, and, and they really stress on you that if you don't continually practice, when it comes down to it, you're going to mess it up because you're not used to doing it. It's like anything else. Practice makes perfect. The, the active shooter training, if the kids can do it all the time, then yeah, I, I'm, so this, is, this is not something that's going to solve itself overnight, but there are definitely solutions that are being ignored. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know about having kids armed. Um, oh, don't have the kids armed, but they know yeah. what to do. My kids yeah, found teachers, cabinets. Yeah, I still look for exits. Like, yeah, that that is the reality of having children during this time. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. I get that. You know, the we shouldn't have kids uh, fear, fearing uh, gun violence and having to to do drills. But I mean, I remember when I was in school and I was doing nuclear war drills back when I was a kid. So, I mean, putting your head under the desk and, and hoping that the... Uh, Did you ever have a nuclear war, though? Did you ever not. hear about several a year? We, we we did not, but there was always the threat. And there was always, I mean, early in my school career, there was there was more tensions than there were towards the later end, later end of my school career. But, um, yeah, I mean, there is a, a threat. There was also tornado drills. There's, you know... Oh, well, yeah. Bad things happen. But, Bad things do happen, and I'm not saying that it's all. It's just really, after all the preparation, after 20 years of doing this, we still haven't figured it out. Maybe we should start looking at alternative solutions. Yes, we definitely need to do it, and it's not a one size fits all. One uh, only okay. one thing, one thing will will fix this. No, this is a comprehensive solution. Um, uh, you know, I've still see studies and I, you know, I'm not a psychology major or uh, pretend to know anything about it, but you know, the, the uh, link between uh, psycho uh, active drugs on kids that are young and, you know, the, that we've been pumping them full of like real in and all that shit uh, to deal with ADHD and, and things like that. Does that have an impact? It should be studied. If, if there is a legitimate linkage between those two things, definitely let's study it. 
um, maybe not make our kids just pop pills every time we can't deal with them. I don't disagree. I, I think that a combination, um, when you are looking at a mental illness, there is no one size fits all. Yeah. And ADHD, all, all of these are, are, like, are, are mental illnesses. Um, anything that affects your brain, a combination of counseling and coping mechanisms and, you know, yeah, medication here and there when it is needed and monitored closely. Are you having any side effects and ask them their kids? So you're going to have to, like, ask them specific questions. Do you feel angry? Do you, do you feel short tempered? Are you having trouble paying attention? Is there's there's there a certain thing that's bothering you more than other, you know, responsible prescribing needs to be a thing yes. right here in America. And that goes for everything from asthma to Viagra. Yeah. And any yeah. of those medications, like everything. Mental health needs to be taken seriously. And it hasn't been. Ask your doctor if you need Viagra. <laughs> I work for urologists too. So <laughs> Viagra wraps, uh, they, they will bring, they will bring chocolate. <laughs> yeah. That's the, I mean, we can get into a whole, discussion about medical reps and uh, the pharmacy. Another time, board. maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we're running out of time tonight, but um, uh, thank you for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. It's been a good discussion about all kinds of things, activism. Uh, again, if you need uh, any uh, support, any anywhere, guidance on uh, getting active in your community, uh, reach out to me. I'll help point you in the right direction. Um, and uh, that's it for this week. Um, got anything to say before we head off? Oh, tomorrow's Monday. It's going to be all right. The I coffee's going to be super strong. It's going to be a great day. Cocaine's going to be super strong. Oh, <laughs> coffee. Yeah, coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, the, the people have come over from the, the uh, my mass eating from, uh, from getting knocked off of my main account. So. Um, it's only string for another few weeks. I don't get my account back until July 1st, which is my birthday. So, Oh, that's, that's a nice birthday yeah. present. I guess yeah. like you get your own account back. Yeah. Until they kick me off again for threaten someone with bubbles or something. <laughs> a, a nerf gun or something like that. I'll <laughs> post me a picture of me with a nerf gun and I'm, I'm banned forever. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can only get stupider from here. But, uh, Definitely. If anything, every day has proven that. That's right. Yes. All you right. Have a great well, night. Yes. Have a great night. And we'll talk to everyone next week. Mm -hmm.